All right. So, hello everyone and welcome to the first uh, WordPress Media Core Briefing. Uh, my name is Reyes, as you all know, and I'll be assisting in moderating today's session along with uh, Lauren. Um, today, I'm super happy to share that we have Anne and McCarthy. Uh, Anne is Product Wrangler at Automatic and Test Lead for the WordPress 6.6 release. Um, she will be providing an overview of the key uh, updates in this upcoming release and answer any questions you may have. And um, just before we begin, I would like to remind everyone uh, that this session is being recorded. Um, this is also our first briefing, so please know that it will serve us as a pilot to test the format, see how that goes, and uh, we would love to get your feedback after the session. Uh, to keep improving, iterate and as needed. Um, I would also like to ask you to submit any questions for Anne through the chat, please, as that would allow us to easily keep track of them and follow up later if needed. And lastly, please indicate your name and your the media outlet or the channel that you represent when sharing your questions, as that would allow us to help uh, to have more context. Um, so just to summarize, um, the meeting, as you know, is being recorded. Please submit your questions through the chat and indicate your name and media outlet or channel. Um, any questions so far? All good? Perfect. So that's it. That's it. Let's get it started. And over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for kicking this off and for yeah, letting this be one of the inaugural things with MediaCore. I'm really excited about what you all are doing. Um, I am not going to assume everyone's familiar with the source of truth. So if you are familiar, awesome. That's amazing. If you're not, all good. Um, I just want to give a brief overview before I actually dive into the document itself. Um, so at a high level, the source of truth is in the intent is not to replace or replicate things like the field guide or dev notes, but it's meant to pull all everything into one place um tag things based on like main users that are impacted by different features um dig a bit deeper into the top features as well as the additional features and part of it is it's intentionally weighted around the features you're likely going to see um things like social media postings about um documentation updates um you know stay of the word like features um so there's a lot of stuff in there um, I do not recommend copying and pasting anything you find in there, but it's meant to, to serve as inspiration and factual information. So you might see some color commentary from me there. I think I have like a special and note of things that I'm calling out, um, but it's meant to be not used as like copy paste this, ship it in your next newsletter or news post. It's meant to be, okay, this is my understanding of the feature. I can look at a demo of it. I can go click on the link that implemented the feature. Um, and I can understand how folks need to go about adopting this. Um, is it opt-in? Is it opt-out? How do people do that? So it's meant to be very factual. Um, it's not necessarily meant to have a bias or to be overly compelling marketing material. Um, the reason I bring that up is I've had folks <clears throat> ask me uh, to make it more like that, and it's just meant to be more of a information brain dump about all things related to the release. Um, I also want to note that there are visuals and demos in as many places as relevant as possible. Um, so I, there's also like a folder you can have access to that you can pull out um, demo content from. Some of it comes from yours truly, some of it comes from proper designers. <laughs> um, so the quality can be a bit different there, but it's meant to show you the future. So you can also like ideally re-record or you can use those um, demos as well if you'd like. Um, some of them are funny and feature my friend's dog. So um, use at your own risk. Um, I'm also happy to demo things live and like get into it a bit more if folks have questions about any particular feature. Um, I have a test site spun up and it's really easy to just spin up other test sites. Um, finally, as we go through this, know that I welcome feedback on the format too. Um, this is something I'm like constantly tweaking. So uh, I definitely wanna hear questions with the content, but no, I welcome um, feedback there too. So I'm going to present um, now. Can you all see my screen? I can't see you all, so I'm just gonna, okay. Um, that is so interesting. Google Meet is funny. So this is the public source of truth. 
Um, I also have a Google Doc link um, that I actually should add to this in case people want to see it in a Google Doc format. Sometimes I find that's a bit easier um, to skim through. Um, I have a change log at the very top of this. So if any major changes happen, so for example, WordPress 6.5 ended up being delayed, um, that is a prime example of something that will end up in the change log. So as the release moves forward, this is a great thing to return to um, in case you're worried about like, let me double check and make sure um, X, Y, and Z feature is right or is landing, or I heard that it might be delayed, let me see what's changed. Um, I am pretty vigilant about keeping this up to date. Um, so you will notice in the Google Doc, if you look there, which I recommend just sticking with this public um, page for now, um, there is a change log already because I shared it a bit earlier. So this is a visual overview of the highlight grid. You might recognize this a bit from WordCamp Europe where Matt did his keynote, but this kind of captures a lot of the high level stuff as well as smaller features. So one of the things we try to balance with these highlight grids it's a combination of like the big heavy hitters, like better padded, pattern management with classic themes, along with smaller everyday workflow items like tabbing to indent list items. So this doesn't always necessarily match up um, with the absolute heaviest. There are sometimes we like to try and include some of the smaller features intentionally. Um, I'm gonna skim through this. This kind of overview offers very high level, my take of what's going on. Um, and what's shifting. So in this case, I talk a lot about design tools taking center stage, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, I do wanna call out this special and note. Um, there are two things that are shifting that we can just jump into now um, before going back. Uh, one is there's a unified editing flow, um, and that includes both plot fills, which developers can use to extend the editor, um, as well as just publishing. So the publishing is going to look different in this experience. Um, and I'm happy to demo this if folks wanna see it demoed. Um, I cannot see you all because I'm sharing my screen, so I just wanna note that as well. Um, actually, I wonder if I can pop that out so I can see folks. Eh, that'll change the size of things. Okay, but yeah, please unmute if, I'm, if anyone wants to see a demo of this. I also, as part of this, have a demo showing the changes between the two. Um, but this is a huge change. So anytime you're publishing something, you're going to feel this. Um, I need to do a YouTube video on this, just haven't gotten to it this week, but it's something I am very much expecting feedback on. And the reason for doing it is to start to bring together the post and site editor closer together, both technically and experience wise. Um, and that also has the benefit of um, now for folks who want to extend the experience, the slot fills um, now, are available across the editors, um, which also means contributors can build features in a single place and have them available for both, but also makes it a lot easier to extend. Um, there's actually a developer hours coming up on this. I think it might have happened actually this morning um, on this, but I expect this to be a huge, this is one of the biggest, I would say, more technical um, call outs of this release and it's easy to miss. Um, but this is a really big deal in terms of folks who are trying to, you know, create plugins um, and embrace where things are going in the future. And it also touches on some of phase three um, admin redesign, like bringing some of that energy into this space. Um, there was some work done to help mitigate um, some unexpected usage of these slots. <laughs> this includes um, Jetpack actually had an issue with this. Um, I work for Automatic, so this came up, um, which was thankfully fixed, but I encourage folks to call this out. Um, basically, edit post slots will only work on edit posts, and the post editor and edit site slots only work on edit sites. So while these things are unified, um, there is some work done to mitigate um, anything unexpected, and I would love to hear feedback on that too, but that's something to call out for plugin authors to pay attention to. And then for everyone, I expect this new publishing experience, like the sidebar looks different, um, the order of information is different, uh, this is gonna be a big deal. Um, the other one I wanna call out just right up top as part of my uh, special endnote <clears throat> is around um, a change in pattern management for classic themes. I did do a video about this this week if you um, wanna dig into that. But essentially, previously, Classic Themes had access to an appearance patterns page, and it showed um, the old 
or the current WP list um, table list view, where where it's basically what you see when you open up poster pages. And that has been replaced by default um, for classic themes with basically the experience that the site editor has. So rather than seeing all oh, the site or you don't see that, you just see a contained experience of the pattern management. And this is a much more visual, feature-rich um, experience, especially for patterns at scale. If you have more than, I would say, even 20 or 30 patterns, like this will be incredibly useful. Um, you can sort by all sorts of things, um, bulk export, um, import them. Uh, yeah, basically change them quickly, duplicate them easily. Um, a lot of workflow um, improvements with this new experience and also just frankly a, a better visual um, experience and an, and an easier one at that. Um, so this was done to give folks a taste of what's to come and this is based on feedback that we've gotten um, both around pattern management and the styles um, experience and the site editor has also been folks have wanted to see that moved into the ability for classic themes to use that that has not happened yet but this is kind of you can think of it as part of phase two gradual adoption stuff. So rather than building all this new stuff entirely separate, we're now trying to safely bring um, some of the new stuff to the current experience of folks with classic themes. Um, because classic themes are so in use, um, this I expect to be, it to be a big change. There is a way to opt out. So as mentioned, you'll always see like this adoption approach. You need to fix the spacing on this. Um, it's available automatically, no opting in required. And to opt out, I have a link to um, this hook. Um, that you can see. I might want to embed that there, actually. Um, you can see I give myself feedback as I'm going to do this. Um, but yeah, this is a big um, a big deal. And the same thing is true if you had template parts that were using um, blocks, this will now be consolidated under patterns. So some hybrid themes you know, expose template parts with blocks, um, but template parts and patterns have merged in this latest release um, under the same, um, not technically, but under the same um, section in the site editor and in this um, pattern management experience. So those are the two right off the bat that I want to call out. I think they're um, probably the most impactful changes in terms of like sheer number of people impacted, I would say. Um, separately from that and diving into more of the high level items, um, I want to talk about data views. Um, so the reason this is a top level item in this document and perhaps not emphasized in the same way as you see in this um, highlight grid, um, is because it's it's touching on broader work and broader narrative across many releases. And the reason this bring, I bring this up to you all is I know the narratives around how the releases connect and what the vision is really matters. Um, so in this case, when you look at um, this highlight grid, the feature that we're calling out is quick previews for pages um, related to this data views, but the work there is actually much broader. Um, and this is part of phase three, specifically the admin redesign efforts. And so this UI that's being created with data views um, is just a huge foundational piece. Um, it's part of what this data view system and advancing the system there is part of what's being exposed when we um, modernize patterns for classic themes. Um, mainly for this release, uh, essentially the work that was done was to, to surface the management pages of template parts, templates, pages, faster. So rather than seeing like a preview of a template or having to have a few extra clicks, we basically removed that and brought those forward. Um, so they're immediately seen and just reducing the number of steps just quickly became clear that there were just too many steps in between accessing each. Um, also the details page, which was um, a black sidebar that you could see with like, yeah, details about whatever you were looking at has been removed. Um, that interstitial step is now gone. And instead, the inspector has been updated to basically like consolidate all the information into that. Um, and the biggest thing that's more visual and exciting, at least, <laughs> um, is around for pages. There's a new side by side layout. And again, this is where I just want to start demoing stuff and I might just need to do that. So please flag if, if folks want to see demos of this. Um, this has been introduced. So you can see a list of the pages as well as a preview while you're clicking through the different pages, making it really easy to just quickly edit or quickly see what's going on. Um, I think it's a really interesting um, design approach, uh, especially for these different layouts, because you can imagine in the future with this work, because uh, extensibility is so in line for phase three and thinking about how plugins might adopt this. Um, it's a layout that I, I think could be really valuable in the future, um, thinking six months to a year down the road. Um, there's also a ton of just smaller changes that we don't need to go through. 
Um, we covered that. Um, another option that has come up. Um, ben? so, oh yes, please. No, sorry. I, I was, I just wanted to share that I'm sharing some links in the chat through, uh, about oh, some speak. of the resources that you have been sharing just so Fox know. Okay. Um, you have been mentioning Perfect. some resources and also, uh, maybe, um, we can also, I mean, if Fox want to see any of those demos later, I mean, I think if we have time, I think that would be, that would be really great. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem. So yeah, I sorry, I didn't want to demos. interrupt, but yeah. No, that's super helpful. Yeah, please. I mean, I'm almost tempted to demo as we're as we're talking, um, just because I think it might be a bit more compelling. What? Do, how do folks feel about that? Would be would folks be cool with me jumping in to demo things a bit more? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna stop sharing in that case and hold on. We're gonna share my sweet. Yeah, I'm. I'm such a visual person. I like gotta see it. So. Yeah, I think as far as we are mindful about the time um, and keep things okay. moving forward, yeah, I mean, that would be really nice. Okay, I'm going to share my entire screen in that case. So we're going to go through. Okay. So right now we're talking about individual typography and color variations. Um, and this, you all probably know and love style variations, right? That changes layout, typography options, color, everything. It's they're, they're, they can be pretty big changes. So in this release, to offer more narrow changes while still opening up more design options, you now have the ability to basically create style variations that only target color or typography. And so rather than changing the entire look and feel of your site, you're able to do more targeted changes and provide users with options for more targeted changes. And this is just a part of the narrative around the larger design system and styling system that is just really getting more and more robust with each release. Um, and I'm going to show you um, an example of that. So instead of browse styles where you will see these different style variations, in this case, you'll actually find them in individual sections, either typography or colors. And you'll see it in these palettes right here. And what's neat is you can basically get a quick preview of what's going to change and even change them above. But as I click through this, um, pay special attention to this section because we'll go through this in a second. But um, you can see it only changes the colors of my site. So perhaps I like a style variation, but I'm like, ooh, I want a different color. Um, a block theme author could create these so that you could have this initial style variation, but then switch through the different color options um, until you find something that works well for your, your system or your vibe. Um, but it just offers a bit more narrow changes rather than switching everything up. Uh, which I think is really powerful. It's just another way to offer um, more options to users um, built in without needing to switch themes or anything like that. And while I'm here, I just wanted to briefly show, this is the new side-by-side -side layout that I was trying to explain. Um, and you can see as I click through this, um, a nice preview of things. There's also these different um, filters so that I can quickly get to publish, quickly get to schedule, there's nothing scheduled. Um, drafts, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I can change things from here. And all of what I'm showing is all part of this broader data views work. Okay. <clears throat> so overrides um, and synced patterns. Um, this is a really interesting feature, probably more on like the agency side, people who want more control potentially. I do think some average like end users could use it. Um, it's still early days. So Overrides and sync patterns basically allows you to have a sync pattern that connects all across your site. But then let's say you have a heading within that sync pattern um, and you want to be able to have it be customized um, across. Um, I can actually, while well, I'm talking about this. So you have this project overview and you want, um, you know, this project description to have overrides. You can see I've already set this up to have overrides. <laughs> so let me disable this real quick. Um, and I can enable overrides right here. All I have to do is just add a name and click enable. And now anywhere this pattern's used, um, I can then basically have it so that I can customize this right here. So let me show an example. We'll go back, maybe new project. Yeah, I was gonna say. So as I click on this, you'll notice that the things that I can edit, flash purple, and this is not meant to be solely 
be the you know way to tune into it. It also helps that this over here has this content only. So you can see in a couple different ways what's actually editable. Um, you'll also notice this icon is purple to show that it's connected. So then I can say, um, this is my last project that I'm proud of. Um, and I can have customized text. So then I can hit save draft. Um, and I can also edit original or I can reset it to the original as well. But if I go back and edit original and let's say I want this background to be, I don't know, that's obnoxious. This like light purple. I'm like, all right, that looks good. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go back to the page. You'll see that the styling is now updated and the content is still customized. Um, and it's pretty powerful. Um, you can also go back and let's say you actually wanna reset this entirely. I can then say, okay, disable overrides. I actually don't want this to be overridable anymore. I want one thing um, and say like, click save go back and you'll see it automatically updates. And also when I click on this, I now can no longer edit this. So there's, it's a, it's a more advanced feature and that's part of why there's the more advanced um, options here to actually change things. It also only works with a certain number of blocks. So in this case, heading, paragraph, button, and image. Um, I'm gonna keep moving along. We have one um, there's question. Also, oh. Yeah, we have one yes. question. And, um, from Davinder, maybe you want to expand about it, Davinder, mm. or would you prefer me uh, to read it? Oh, I understand the question. If I'm happy to, oh, perfect. Dive in, yeah. Um, that's a great question. So the question is: the side by side layout. Most of this will possibly trickle into the upcoming WP dashboard UI redesign. Is that correct? Um, I recommend reading through that June 2024 update. But the the gist of it is explorations are underway to bring. Um, this new experience, this data views experience into uh, future like post pages. So there's actually like, let's see, I just tested this yesterday. Um, well, right now it's very experimental. There is an experiment in the Gutenberg plugin that actually um, implements this on the post list, um, but it's very early days. Um, yeah, I. that's so funny. I actually got an error. So yeah, this is actively underway. Um, but yes, it's looking at this and seeing, does this work? If it works, how does it work? Does anything need to change? Does anything need to evolve? Uh, this is being done both in post and the media library, um, but it's very early days. It's not slated necessarily for the release. It'll depend on how things actually progress. Um, does that answer your question? Hopefully. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, so next up, improvements to grid layout. Um, grid layout is a long requested feature, um, especially from block themers and designers. This is something that has just been hammered on for a while. Um, so building on the previous grid layout that was in the release, this one surfaces it as a variation of the group blocks. It's similar to like you know, row and stack and group, you now have grid. So you can add the grid block um, as is. And there's two different options. Um, auto generates the grid in row and columns like automatically, and it's also responsive. So it has built-in responsiveness where manual allows you to specify the exact number of columns. And there's also a really neat visual resizer um, that you can use whenever you're in auto mode to just visually resize it. Um, I'll note, and I think this is like easy to miss, any block can use this new grid la layout um, using the supports key and block JSON. So if you're writing something more developer forward, I might mention that. Um, I think that is like a very neat way to implement this within your own custom block, especially on like the agency side. This is definitely like a builder designer. I actually didn't put a tag of who this impacts because I think it impacts everyone. Um, and I also have a quick video that goes into that feature. All right, we covered that. <clears throat> Yes, so another really high level um, important developer update. So the Block Bindings API launched in 6.5. And as you probably noticed, this is another one of those things that kind of exists across releases. And I'd expect this work to continue across releases. This is another through line across a set of releases that um, I think we'll see. So the Block Bindings API partially was um, done to help power overrides and sync patterns. And there was a huge refactor of the existing implementation as part of also landing overrides and sync patterns. 
Um, and there is a better visual experience if you have actually bound and connected blocks um, to understand that those blocks are connected. Work is still needed on there to kind of further things, but that purple, um, like, let me go back. <clears throat> For example, this purple icon here and surfacing this here, like this is a good example of trying to show connected blocks using um, the block bindings API. And one of the biggest changes that I think is uh, very exciting is you can edit connected sources directly from the block. Um, and when you save, there'll be a connection that you've edited those custom field values. And this was on the, <laughs> on the bubble for the release. So I'm actually really excited to see this land. So for folks, again, more technical, um, this is a huge way to continue to use custom fields. And a lot of times with these custom fields and the block bindings API, um, you can get rid of a lot of custom block implementations um, that folks would previously have to build and maintain. And this is just a much easier, much less maintenance way of accomplishing the same thing. Um, and I see this continuing to, to march forward um, in a big way. So that is a good one to call out. Now we're getting into kind of the additional items. So I'm, I'm going to be a bit shorter with these, um, but I'm happy to demo whatever folks want to see. Um, so rollbacks, auto updates, um, this is really exciting. I know Matt was super excited about this, and it's part of the narrative of WordPress really valuing revisions, really valuing um, that you can trust your content will stay safe on the site. So for 6.6, .6, when you set an auto update for a plugin, if it fails, it will automatically roll back um, and catch it for you, which I think is really exciting. Um, very useful for folks who are maintaining sites um, or just honestly, like I, <laughs> I added a bunch of auto updates to one of my side project sites. So all around good for the average end user and good for um, folks on the higher end as well. There's a slew of design tooling upgrades. So this is supposed to be the heading for these additional things that we see. <clears throat> this top level one went back and forth around being a top level item. So I think it's good to emphasize um, I also have been seeing some confusion around it. So I just want to note that as like, it, it, if you're digging into it and your brain starts to spin, um, you're not alone there. Like I definitely recommend spending some time with it because I think um, it'll, it's a really big game changing option and I'll actually demo this because I think it's important to see. So 6.6 .6 allows you to define styling options for multiple blocks, including inner blocks. So what does that mean? Why would you use this? Um, imagining, imagine you, or an agency, you have very specific branding uh, that you need to implement for a client, both colors and like the look and feel of it. Um, you can basically provide these shortcuts to styling options um, using what's being built in 6.6 .6 and registering it as a block style variation. And it shows up in the same place that you see um, block variations. So it's in a similar UI and it changes the styling of that section, including the inner blocks. Um, so there's multiple ways to register this. I will not get into the details of it, um, but I do just want to call that out that there's multiple ways of doing it. And you can actually, once you've registered these, you can actually edit them um, via the styles interface in the site editor, which is really exciting. So let's go back to, where did I put this? Yeah, okay. Um, so, in this case, I have this section. Um, you can imagine um, I'm trying to keep branding consistent and I can change and I can name this whatever I want. Default, section one, um, what have you. I basically have this here. Um, blow this up a little bit. I actually can't make that bigger, which is annoying. Um, but this is just the title here. So I could call this um, light. I'll refresh this. But it allows you to have, um, especially for container blocks, um, which a group block is. So now you can see light here. So you can customize all this stuff. But it allows you at default to have this. But imagine you want some options. So you could have like four or five options in the same way you have block variations um, to switch between. And it automatically adds styling to your site. Um, so in this case, maybe we call that the light experience. And then what's neat is if you do this correctly as a block themer and you rely on global styles rather than having local block styles here, you can then go in and using the same feature I showed earlier, um, choose between different palettes and you'll see it'll automatically update 
um, based on the palette you're choosing, because basically what this um, section does is it's using <clears throat> color variables. So you can see I pulled variables from the theme. So it automatically responds to um, the different colors of the theme. So it keeps the contrast um, mostly good. Um, this was a quick demo that I pulled together last night and last minute um, using some of the stuff actually from Rich Tabor, my coworker um, and fellow contributor. Um, but it's a pretty exciting and powerful feature when you combine it because it allows you to have this customization um, set up by default, but then it corresponds with how you update um, your site further in the future. Um, and you can actually go into styles and make changes to this thing that you created in um, a separate JSON file. So it basically allows a lot of control and a lot of optionality and also reduces the need to constantly replicate. So if you're trying to replicate a bunch of sections, you now can just click through. It's kind of like a, you can imagine a bunch of um, parts of the site and you're trying to have them look similar. Um, you can imagine having like the default, the light, a dark, um, and like a modern, and you could switch between them and ensure that they all work well together um, color-wise. And to me, the really powerful thing is how much you can control um, the inner blocks. This has been a long requested feature on the enterprise side, um, just to have more granular control, because you can imagine having these options here, but then turning off a bunch of options below. Um, so it has some like presets basically built in um, to style sections of your site and reduce the need to like duplicate styling all the way through. Um, as part of this, there were changes to CSS specificity. So this is another good thing to call out. Um, I will not go super depth in, in here, but to basically get the styling to have the right hierarchy, um, some changes had to be made and the specificity. So um, there's a detailed dev note about it as well. Negative margins. Um, for negative margins, uh, the neat thing, I'm just going to pick that one. <clears throat> You cannot reach negative margins using the drag handles. You have to manually insert it. Um, so you cannot, this is intentional to prevent um, people from doing, you know, basically dragging and accidentally not being able to hit zero because oftentimes people might want to zero out the margins. Um, so this is done intentionally. It's also honestly meant for more advanced designs. So uh, it's a feature that has also been long requested. This is, it's amazing how many people, um, really wanted this. <laughs> um, and so I'm really, this is a big feature for the design side of things as well. Um, Site-wide background images are now available in the site editor. So this is also related to having site-wide images in the customizer and some compatibility between the two. Um, for theme authors, you can use both relative and absolute paths to your images depending upon your use case, which is a huge deal. Um, so you don't necessarily need to, to bundle it, which is pretty exciting. So I have two different examples here of absolute paths where the file needs to be hosted and maintained as well as a relative path um, where you can just have it in the theme assets. So I'm gonna call that out. Box shadow has been added to featured image block, um, more design options. You can use your featured image in the media and text block. So this builds on some previous functionality of using the featured image in like more places like the cover block. Um, you can create and edit shadows and styles, um, which is pretty darn cool. Um, so you'll see this new shadow section here. You can create like a custom shadow um, and do all sorts of funky stuff. I had a way too much fun doing this the other day. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. And you can also obviously edit the current ones as well. <coughs> Um, there's a couple more additional supports. I won't mention those. Um, aspect ratio support for theme JSON. This is um, a pretty neat, Justin Tadlock is really excited about this, um, which makes sense. But you can basically change the available presets for aspect ratio um, for image cover and featured image. Um, so you can add your own and there's an example here. So maybe you want like an extra wide um, aspect ratio. Uh, it's a way to just have more optionality built into the theme. Um, similar to this, there's now added control for default font sizes and spacing in ThemeJSON, and this led to a change in ThemeJSON version. So this is an important thing to call out. We're now on ThemeJSON version 3. Um, but basically, thanks to this effort, you can turn off default font sizes um, and disable them from showing the, the sizes supplied from core. This has been also a requested feature for folks who want more control of the editor and not just exposing um, everything. And the same is true of the default spacing sizes. So 
Um, this is another layer of control um, added to ThingJSON and also solving some requested features. But as a result, um, it's had to update to v3. And this, I won't get into the details of this, but there is some work done to preserve some backwards compatibility. Um, this, these two are some fun uh, bug fixes, basically almost, um, that I think are worth calling out. So the inserter previously, when you would open up, um, let's say, what should I do? Let's, I'm going to go list black. Um, so when you were previously had um, the inserter open and you had uh, an item like list, um, it would only show list item. All of this wouldn't be visible. And now you can see that you can click, you know, I can add a list item, that's great. But I can also hit heading and I'll add the heading below. So it doesn't obviously, for the blocks that are allowed to be added, it still prioritizes adding those and surfaces them at a high level um, at the top. But then you can still see the controls and options you have, where before this wasn't visible. So it was a pretty poor experience. Um, and this has now been resolved in a way that I'm, I'm really excited to see that this landed. Um, and it's a, a good thing to call out just on the base user experience of, of using all this new stuff. Um, similar to this, uh, if you had custom CSS, um, in a style variation and then switch style variations, you would lose it. And now it copies the CSS between the variations, um, which I think is um, pretty neat. Um, there's also a new shuffling patterns uh, in specific scenarios. So if there is a pattern that you add um, to your site um, and it has a pattern in the, there's more patterns in that same category, you'll see a shuffle option um, at the top. I'm actually gonna cheat and just watch my own video um, just to show you all. It's 15 seconds, so it's just easier than speeding something up. Um, but you'll see this nice little shuffle option and it'll shuffle things through. This is another way of surfacing different um, discoverability of patterns and, and different uh, styling and design options. Um, I'm curious to see how this evolves and how it overlaps with some other things that are being worked on. You can bulk export your patterns. This was a requested thing amongst folks with uh, multiple sites. A lot of times, like different builders and stuff, um, oftentimes have patterns across different sites they want to use. And before, you'd have to manually export each one. And now you can export them all. Uh, that's another smaller thing. Um, similar to this uh, shuffling option, you can also browse and switch templates and template parts in the inspector. Um, I'm also going to cheat on this. And this is a good way for me to demo kind of some of the assets I have to, the, um, to see the feature. But you'll see this transform into, and you can swap between different templates. So this is showing different templates. Um, and it, it surfaces similar functionality that already exists, but I think it's worth calling out as we're trying to have some intuitive um, parts of the interface show things that folks might want to use. So this is swapping out the footer. Um, and again, options will only show up if they're available. So if you're using a theme and they don't show up, um, that's why it's because there's not something available. This is one of the smaller things, but powerful um, indentless block items via the tab key. Um, there are a number of performance improvements, uh, but it's not necessarily as robust as 6.5. Um, I recommend digging into these specifically, but 6.5 definitely was like a big performance release and there are still some awesome things here, um, but it's just not as heavy hitting. Same in the interactivity API, this is more of like a maintenance um, cycle for them, but I expect that to the interactivity API to continue to be iterated on in the future. Um, same with block hooks API. Um, same with the HTML API. There's a lot of just like routine API updates this release um, that you're welcome to dig into. Um, the token map is new. Um, I am not going to dig super deep into this, <laughs> partially because it's hyper technical um, and I think more niche isn't the right word, but yeah, the average everyday WordPress user probably won't be impacted as much by this, but if this perks your ears, definitely dig into this. Dennis Snell has done a ton of work, and this is a great example um, for, like, if you have a large organization, it's really helpful at scale. Um, so, dropping support for PHP 7.0 and 7.1, this is always important to call out, as well as this, um, some changes to prepare for React 19. So these are just kind of base software things to keep in mind and to mention for folks. I need to fix that, I'll follow with that later. 
Um, I think the rest of these, I want to be mindful of time and leave room for questions. I also can stay over time. But the rest of these are more smaller in features that I think you can dig into later. Um, again, mainly refinements. Um, this is a good call out for enterprise, adding support for custom ports for multi-sites. Same with this. But yeah, let's dive into, that's basically the end of it. And then I get into some items that got punted from a, from this release, mainly because folks ask about them. And so it's a way to get ahead of like, why didn't this make it in? And it's like, here's a reason why uh, you'll see like a brief explanation. Actually, but let me jump uh, back over and see. Yeah. No, I was actually, uh, I mean, once the word you were done, uh, that, that was also one of my questions. If you could also maybe clarify, um, like the current status of the Zoom out view, because I know there were some oh, yeah. questions about that and it has been printed, right? I mean, it's, uh, it won't be, uh, coming in this release. Yeah, so if you could maybe yes. provide some context to just help clarify any questions about that, that would be great. Huh? Yeah, so zoom out mode is complex, right? Um, but it's it, it has the potential to be powerful. So zoom out mode in general is allowing you to, rather than dealing with editing something on a block by block basis, it zooms you out to look at this, the sections of your site, mainly using patterns as the paradigm that you're interacting with. And that's where that like shuffling patterns feature could be really interesting, right? You're zoomed out and you're shuffling through patterns as you're creating a page. Um, it could replace kind of starter patterns. Potentially there's some like explorations there. But the long and short of it is um, a lot of work went into zoom out mode for this release. And similar to pattern overrides in the, in the last release and being able to add that feature, um, not enough work was able to be done to get to an experience that was compelling enough. Um, and part of the question is, is zoom out mode a mode that you can click on and toggle on like a distracting free mode? Is it something that is automatically initiated when you enter a certain part of the interface? Um, how do you get out of it? How do you get, you know, if you're in zoom out mode, how do you go back to editing granular box? Like these are parts of the design questions that just were not able to be explored far enough um, to implement, but I expect it to be something that we um, see in the future. There is an experiment you can turn on in the Gutenberg plugin um, if you want to tease that or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it just didn't get it just didn't get far enough. And I, I expect what we'll end up seeing is that it will be um, it's already initiated right now. Um, I'll actually show you all just because I think that's a good thing to do my entire screen. Um, when you are in styles, this is part of the zoom out, the initial zoom out. So you can see it contextually, right? Like it makes sense that when you're in this, like I'm changing the install, entire style version of my site, maybe I want a more zoomed out look, right? And so you can imagine that being applied to diff different situations. So I, one of the main ways it's being looked at is with patterns. When you open up patterns, you can imagine that same zooming out effect happening. Um, and I, I basically imagine that that's what we'll see happen is something more um, <clears throat> contained, another flow will be added that will include this like zooming out feature um, that will be advantageous in that space. We're just not, not quite there yet. Does that help? Okay, I'm like, I can get real deep into that, but <laughs> I'm trying to stay high level. Thanks, and I think we can also, um uh maybe open the floor to any other questions um maybe uh if any of you folks want to see too. exactly want to see any other um demo just let us know and um uh, and if there are no questions i mean i have a few more so but yeah i would love to see if any uh if folks have any other questions okay simon simon ask um a bit of an aside how much work goes into the source of truth post that's a great question oh Actually. god so much um it's an immense amount of work um it's gotten a lot easier but yeah i basically have to go through like every gutenberg release post pull things out and then you know things change it's a lot of work it's a lot of like uh vigilance and persistence um but i get really close to the details i get really close to the feedback as test lead it's really useful um for me to to have that kind of clarity of vision. But yeah, it's it's a lot of work. I would say, uh, I don't, I, I, it's hard. Like each week I probably spend during beta and RC at least um, two hours on it, 
speech and then the lead up of actually getting it written is just like a caffeine filled nightmare <laughs> but it's fun i like love this stuff i love getting into like how many details can i pull in how can i make it compelling um how can i make sure it's like clear um, that people can look at it and anyone can get value from it so i i really welcome feedback i have not changed the format too much since the early days and i've been doing this for i think like eight releases or something like that it started as like a ad hoc thing i sent to folks and has and since grown um eric asks with the block bindings API, does it matter the source of the custom field? For example, does it work with advanced custom fields and similar plugins? Um, it does not currently, as far as I know. Um, there's actually, let me, hold on. Ryan, Ryan Welcher does some streams. Um, and I think he actually did a stream recently connecting, yeah, he connected ACF pods to blocks using block bindings. So let me correct myself. There is a very long stream two weeks ago. Um, this is how much of a nerd I am, um, where you can connect these two things um, using a change that will ship in WordPress 6.6. I was about to say, as I was about to talk, I was like, I think I actually saw that this is possible. So yes, that is um, very much possible. And not only that, Ryan did like a deep dive, like almost two hour live stream about it, which he is so good about going in, into depth about that stuff. I would literally link off to it um, I also wouldn't be surprised if we see a developer um, news article about it at some point, um, if you all have not dug into that site, you definitely should. Um, next question, is, is am I pronouncing this right, Davender? Is that the correct, okay, that's what I make sure. Which one feature are you most excited about or looking forward to in this release? Let me look. I'm like, you'd think that'd be an easy to answer question, but here we are. I mean, for me personally, I think being able to override specific items and sync patterns is really powerful. There's a couple of sites I run on the side um, that I am going to be implementing this, like ASAP. <laughs> I think that's just like a really neat. Um, really neat feature to maintain stylistic control. And in the future, there's work around like maybe even allowing, you know, more stylistic options locally too. So I'm, I'm really excited to see the future of that and just kind of seeing it as like a supercharged, um, it's a supercharged pattern. Like it's just amazing how much you can do now and how much it saves time. Um, and then I can just like have a bunch of these sync patterns and in an instant, if I want to update the background color or change the style, it'll all update. Like, I just think that that's like pure magic. Um, from the my like product brain side, I would say the bringing uh, the new experience of pattern management to classic themes. I am all about how do we reach more people with what's new, um, and I just think that that is like a, a huge a huge deal. Um, I am very excited about it. I think it will give folks a taste of like a more modern WordPress experience. Not everyone's going to love it. We always need a filter to or a hook to get rid of it, but. Um, I think it is just like the scale of feedback, the excitement. Um, I keep hammering on that. Um, even though I know it's not like the coolest new thing, I think it is one of the most impactful things about this release. And um, a Japanese contributor, um, Aki, really pushed it forward. And so big, big props go to him. I want to call him out for that. Um, Javier um, asks, Core has not published a lot of information about the beta compatibility and compatible with exceptions oh man is it something it's going to improve we are preparing a wordpress 6.6 server compatible for hosting companies but some ways we are okay let me look at this i'm guessing this is really a php yep okay yes this is a great question i was involved in this previously um i think i worked on like a news article on this and i don't we don't have anything in the works right now but this is it's actually funny you mentioned this there's i have a to-do item next week <laughs> around following up on this um i will i will put this down on my personal list to follow up on to see if something is needed um I think it needs to improve. What you're what you, what you're basically asking is like, is this going to improve? Are we going to see something more around this? And we need that. And like Javier, I think we worked on this previously, if I'm not mistaken. All of a sudden, your name. I'm like, I know who you are. Um, 
I'm going to follow up on this because I think that that's a good thing to loop back on Um, because we do need to communicate that a bit better. And I know that that's like a very tricky area and people have a lot of strong feelings around it. So cool. These are the improvements we're adding to the post. Okay. Um, Simon asks, which change in WordPress 6.6 do you think will have the most long-term impact for WordPress overall? Um, not yet, but I do want to underscore data views and the work that is happening there, um, along with that connects. I had a really hard time figuring out how to structure these two things, but the unifying the editor so you have this like technical foundation that's unified and then you have this new like offshoot being built with data views in the site editor like those two things combined um, are creating a technical and visual foundation for the future it's very early the apis are private intentionally but the um, plugins can start playing with it there's some designs you can copy and paste um, from the wordpress.org um, design figma library i just think that that is um, a huge part of the larger narrative we're not seeing a huge like heavy hitting like Here's this huge thing. I do think this new like side by side layout is really cool and powerful, um, but a lot of it is uh, more foundation building, and it cannot be overlooked. Like that is going to be a huge long term thing. I think people need to. Um, I'm trying to get people as much as possible to pay attention to that, and that's part of why we did like a June update um, is to to bring attention there. Um, is there any plan to add the new data views or something similar for plugin configuration pages? Yes. Uh, I'm guessing you're thinking about like settings and forms. Um, let me find this issue real quick. There's this one, but yeah, that's part of the work. So part of the work that needs to be done is like, yeah, what do what do these settings pages look like? Um, and there's gotta be, oh, there you go, okay. Let me make sure. I'm missing one of the, yep, here we go. Um, this is part of the extensibility side of things, which I'm gonna also link to. But yes, the long and the short of it is that is something that needs to be figured out. It's like, what do forms look like? What do settings pages look like? Um, and some plugins are, are, I'm getting feedback, are starting to experiment with that. And that's part of what would be huge to get feedback on. But yes, that is part of what's being worked on is around forms, settings, pages. Um, yeah, like what is, because uh, some things you don't need a preview of, right? Like if you're filling out a settings page for a plugin, you don't need to see a preview of it. So that like side-by-side -side layout doesn't make as much sense. So what does it look like to apply it elsewhere? Um, what components are needed? Like all of this should be reusable and there should be a common design language. So you're not installing five different plugins and getting five different drastically different experiences. We want them to have a shared visual language that folks can use. So that's part of why I'm like hammer home a lot of the day of use stuff, start paying attention there. Um, it's not ready to be used yet, but you can start exploring and we need feedback from folks for sure. Um, Eric, how much are classic themes considered when adding features to the block or site errors? It seems like they're catching up to block themes a bit more in each release. Um, I would say it's a big part of um, consideration with each release, just about there is like something being brought um, over to the classic theme side to bridge the divide. Uh, I think one of the last ones that I can remember that I was really excited about was um, bringing appearance tools to classic themes. So classic things could opt into a lot of appearance tools that were commonplace if you're using um, a block theme, but that classic themes didn't necessarily have access to. Um, so you should continue to see things like chip away there where um, classic themes are getting access to the new stuff. And this is feedback that I've seen <clears throat> mentioned a lot which each, with, with each release is like, okay, well, what's actually impacting like the most users of WordPress um, and how do we communicate that? And part of it is we need to have a compelling vision of what's next to help folks um, adapt and adopt and future-proof themselves. But then there's also like the reality of a lot of folks, um, both in the enterprise space and everyday space who are still in classic themes and like how are we reaching them? Um, so yeah, I would say it's very much considered as much, but balanced with driving the future forward so there's a compelling future to grab onto so there's a there's a dance there for sure these are great questions and um just as a reminder that we are nearing the end of the session of course i mean we i think if 
that's okay we can be a little bit flexible but just a reminder that um and I, I don't know if you have maybe we have time for one more question something like that but otherwise oh you can yeah i'm chilling i i mean i have like 6.6 .6 stuff but <laughs> yeah i have i have probably at least another 15 minutes if folks have more questions i know i went a bit long i mean it, yeah i just want to be mindful with Fox time, but of course, yes. um, I, I'm happy to be flexible. Just want to, yeah. Um, also, and maybe uh, this gives Fox some more time if, in case they want to share any questions. But um, I know you talk about uh, some of the big updates coming six point six. You also mentioned some of those additional items. Um, but sometimes there's so much going on in each release that you know, like there. Are, um features that can go a little bit unnoticed but um mm. are, you know like we know that some of those smaller details are also important sometimes so i was just wondering if you think are there any of those smaller details or updates that are worth mm. highlighting uh, for this release or that it would be also helpful for fox to help amplify and that you know those of maybe the some of those of the updates that usually go unnoticed but it would be nice if you like it folks know know about them as well um i would definitely say the narrative around design tooling continue to expand whether it's like adding box shadow to featured image block or being able to set background images or negative margins like that all of these like design and styling and making it visual and easy and like kind of touching on mats um simple things should be easy, complex things should be possible or something. I'm paraphrasing that. Um, but I think that's like a really interesting challenge with this, right? Like uh, we're adding these toolings, but then how do they work well together and kind of touching on those um, smaller, like, you know, with each WordPress release, we get access to more and more options and more and more um, things are possible. And if you want to build an interface, here are some of the newer tools that maybe you might miss. But if you want to go, you know, really out there, go use the interactivity API. <laughs> like, go create something um, interactive and more advanced. Go use the custom fields. Um, like, there's a lot. There's a story to tell there around like uh, these releases right now, where we're both doing like very technical stuff, and then we're also like improving the experience of um, the block inserter. Uh, to me, the block inserter change, uh, I think, is a important one um i think it's just like a good quality of life as well as um you know i think the indenting list block via the tab key like that will be an everyday improvement for me <laughs> um to be able to to use that those are the the two that probably come to mind first um a smaller one that i think is worth mentioning um for like extensibility so like they're kind of hot topics with each release i'm not sure if you all feel this but it's like performance is a big one everyone wants to hear about performance stuff Accessibility is a big one. What are we doing to improve accessibility? Extensibility, how can I extend better? And then governance or control. How can I control what you are building more? So those are every release, my brain is thinking about those things. It's just like a constant um, uh, <laughs> thing in my mind. Um, <clears throat> and I think of the last one, control, as also being related to like exposing things to classic themes. Um, and there is a new filter to extend um, the list of post content blocks. And this is more like, edge case but if you have a custom block um your block that reads or writes data to like the actual post um you couldn't actually edit your block directly if the template was locked and so this is kind of an interesting use case where when you're editing a template um you can only edit what's in the post content block and if you had a custom block that maybe added i don't know some other functionality like a calendar or something like that you couldn't edit it within the template and now you can add that um, if it writes to um, the post object, you can actually add that as one of the allowed post content blocks so it's editable. And that's a smaller quality of life control agency side of things. Um, but I think it's another one of those like smaller improvements that I like, glanced over at the end, but actually is, is again, really powerful and touches on that, that last piece of control. Um, but I don't know if it's helpful to like name those different things, but that definitely is, is what comes to mind. Oh, Javier. Great question. There's an idea of having community blocks, not in core itself, but maintained by the community. Is that something we will see soon? Um, the update on that, and this is as of this last week, this was actually brought up in the core dev meeting. And the term that's being used is canonical blocks. Um, I, I am 
can be particular about words. So canonical blocks is basically the idea of exactly what you're describing. It's not shipped um, directly in core when you install a new update, um, but they are blocks that are in the block library that are maintained by core, have the name wordpress.org team, you know, like have that like branding weight behind them and the maintenance behind them and the um, quality uh, behind them. And so there, this has been a huge discussion. Um, right now, there was like a little bit of a side uh, quest where folks were looking at whether you could sideload these block plugins sponsored by Core into themes as a possibility. Um, so that's kind of been under discussion right now. Um, but there's an initial PR right now for the time to read block to have this be one of the first ones that might take this canonical approach. But um, frankly, the details have not been fully fleshed out. And so you should expect to see a make core proposal um, discussing this further. It's still under a lot of debate because it gets into like, what qualifies as a canonical block? Um, you know, we try to build for 80% of users. Should we be building these for the 20%? I don't want this thumbs up, sorry. Um, <laughs> like who, uh, how do you distinguish what's a canonical block versus a core block, who maintains it, do we have folks who can maintain it? Um, what happens if you wanna graduate a canonical block to core? Um, should we move some core blocks to canonical blocks? Like there's all these like larger questions. And then what's the base user experience, right? Like what's the benefit to users? Um, and I also think a big part of this to touch on is block themers. What is the benefit to block themers? Because those are the folks who might be more likely to bundle these into um, a theme they create. And that's where like the side loading um, block plugin, single block plugins um, came up um, for themes this past week, because ultimately like one of the major use cases for this would be for block themers to include it by default. Cause like the average user is probably not gonna go out and like install a bunch of canonical blocks. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think we'll see it necessarily soon. I think we'll see experimentation around it very soon. I think we will see a, a lively discussion and probably someone trying something. Um, but I'm not that I have like a 50% confidence threshold in like if it'll happen in 6.7. Like I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not putting bets down for that. I think it's a, a big thing to, to figure out. I think that'll change depending on who you talk to. <laughs> that's a great question though. And let me drop a link to that as well. Cause that's like an easy, so this is like the early PR the time to read that's very much a draft it's just someone messing around um and then this proposal from matthias who is the project architect and then you'll just see a huge discussion and yeah matthias left a comment there recently I think it's an interesting idea. I would love to see it. I would love to see like an increasing number because we're being, the weight of having the branding of WordPress Network behind these blocks would go really far. And there's a lot of things that you still cannot do that blocks would make sense for. Um, that would just like, yeah, really allow, allow a lot of design optionality in the base WordPress experience and that you can add in, like not by default, but you could add in that I think would be really cool. What other questions? I'm like, did I talk too fast at any point? I'm always happy to go back and reiterate something. The source of truth should also like, there's there's links as much as possible to anything visual. So that should help as well. If you're ever like, what is this person writing? Like the, the video and the image is there for a reason. Cause I do think this stuff can be really um, much easier to understand when you're actually looking at it. Um, especially like a before and after. I, I had another question and um, it was about um, what are some features in 6.6 .6 that benefit like larger or enterprise websites. Um, but I saw you also mentioned in this, I mean, you also add like this kind of tag to the source of truth. So I feel, I feel it, it also feels or clear or gives a, a pretty good picture of those um, features that might impact uh, that audience, but yeah, um, that was also, yeah, one. I would, 
other than the features that are tagged with that, because some, some of them are not tagged because they're meant for everyone, I do just want to repeat and underscore the exposing the new patterns experience for classic themes and the unified publish flow. Um, are, they're gonna, that's going to be huge for enterprise. Like I, I have joined, um, I've done some phase three research that I've published about um, on Make Core with a number of newsrooms, large, small newsrooms, medium size, and it's like who moved my cheese like it, it, any change impacts the documentation impacts the training impacts the base editor experience um of folks who are trying to quickly get a breaking news story out um or who are live blogging so i i am especially keen on those two things um mainly mainly the publish flow if i had to pick one um i think a lot of folks have control already of the patterns experience but that's also still just like a jarring change if you don't um but the publish flow like <laughs> We, I already, there was um, initially revisions were going to be more hidden than they were. Um, and that was the one that uh, we pulled in enterprise feedback for um, around like the new publish flow to, to remain it surfaced um, at a higher level, because that is just like a base thing that I feel like I saw constantly when talking to folks about like their workflows with writing. Um, so yeah, I just, that is the main one I'd underscore. And otherwise, like there's, um, yeah, I do have it intentionally listed out. That's actually a new thing with this, the last like, couple of sources of truth is trying to call it enterprise stuff, especially as we get deeper into to phase three. And then there's some stuff kind of like I described with like the new filter to extend what counts as a post content block. Um, there's also the ability to preview a template in the post editor for non-administrators. So before, um, if you weren't an administrator, you couldn't actually preview the template. So that's like another, I think, good one for enterprise, um, Fabian um worked on that um the custom ports for multi-sites feels very enterprise to me but because i i previously worked on multi-site um yeah i'm trying to think i do think the the styling sections of blocks could be really interesting but so few enterprise level folks that i have talked to at least have adopted block themes so uh, you have to be using a block theme to take advantage of that feature um, and so that could be really neat in terms of branding and control and extensibility and all that sort of stuff, but we're not quite there yet on the enterprise side. I probably, I would maybe emphasize it as like in the future when you embrace this, this is some of the cool stuff you can do, but not use this now because most folks are not, they're using classic themes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also excited about the pattern management for classic themes, I think that that will be pretty important to bridge the gap with block themes. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I agree. Just the management side, I mean, it's, it's, it's just so much more visual, duplicating patterns, renaming patterns, all that sort of stuff. It's just so much easier with this new experience. All right, I think there are no more questions. So um, I think it's safe to, conclude the, the session um so yeah thank you thank you everyone for your participation and for the great questions and and thank you so much also for sharing your insights and taking time to address all those questions um thanks for organizing <laughs> thank you and have a great day or have a great rest of your day and see you all on Slack. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Bye, y'all. Recording.